This screencast is intended primarily for Python programmers. It briefly introduces Leo's programming and scripting features. The outline you see is the Leo file I used to develop Leo itself. It contains over one million lines of Python code and all of Leo's documentation. This tab contains the sources for Leo's core. This tab contains the sources for all of Leo's official plugins. This tab contains notes to myself. And this tab contains the sources for all of Leo's documentation. Focusing attention on just the code of interest makes programming much easier. Leo's clones are live copies of nodes. Changing a clone changes all the copies. Here are some of the clones I created recently to improve Leo's find command. Searching for S-Control limits the search to just those clones. I can also use the clone find all command to find all nodes containing S-Control. Now let's look at Leo's scripting features. Any Leo node may contain a Python script. Control B, Leo's execute script command, executes the text of any node or tree as a Python script. No special markup is needed. Here is the famous hello world script. I'll type control B to execute it. Notice that the script runs without errors, even though G does not seem to be defined. That's because execute script predefines three symbols, G, C, and P. These variables give access to all outline data and to all of Leo's own source code. You can also build scripts from entire outlines. Simple markup, section references, and add others tells Leo how to build the script. Let's look at an example. Here is the top level node of a complex script. It starts with a doc string. The next line is a section reference. The value of that section reference is the contents of a node having that same name. Next, the script has an at others directive. The value of at others is the contents of all other nodes. In this case, the value of at others is this node and all its descendants. Outlines can build 
external files as well as scripts. LeoFind.py is a clone of one of the source files in Leo's core. It is organized in much the same way. There is a section reference containing a large amount of documentation. followed by an add others command which pulls in the rest of the tree. Notice that more than one node may have an add others directive. This allows precise control over placement and indentation of source code something that is essential for Python programming. The previous examples show that outline structure is visible everywhere. Less obviously, but more importantly, outlines create user-defined contexts and types. Scripts and programs can use those contexts in new and creative ways. By convention, Headlines starting with the at sign denote new types or contexts. Leo defines many types. You can easily define your own. Let's look at some examples. Within an at settings tree, at int, at string, and similar nodes define user settings. These nodes have no effect outside at settings trees. Here is a clone of the actual settings in this Leo file. It contains only the overrides I use in this file. The defaults are set in another .leo file. At test nodes define unit tests. There is no need to subclass unit test .unit test nor is there any need to put your test code within such subclasses. Here is a complete unit test. Of course, it will fail. Several Leo commands will execute this unit test. We can see those commands using typing completion. Here are the possibilities. If we run the unit test with one of those commands, we'll get this result in the console. As expected, the test fails. Here is another complete unit test. It verifies that Leo predefines three symbols during unit tests, just as in scripts. If we run this test, the test passes. At button nodes define new Leo commands and also create buttons in the icon area. That's how these buttons were defined. You can apply these new commands to any particular tree. For instance, this button prints the headline of the selected node. So let's select a node and now we'll press this button and we see the correct result. We can also execute the command from the mini buffer. All parts of Leo are aware of outline structure. For example, you define abbreviations in add settings trees as usual. I like to end abbreviations with two semicolons so they don't trigger unexpectedly. Abbreviations can expand to text or they can expand to outlines.
Leo uses types to determine how particular nodes are rendered. Alt-0, Leo's VR toggle command, shows and hides the view rendered pane. This pane renders the body text of the selected node. By default, the view rendered pane shows restructured text. Depending on types, it can show other kinds of output. Here is an icon. Here is HTML. This is the same page rendered differently. And here is the rendering of an SVG graphics file. Here is the rendering of the actual sources. Thanks for watching this video. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Bye bye.